Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Edson Ochoa and, of course, uh, Jacob Young over here. We are recording here at HEB Park. Uh, a couple of moments ago, the it was the final whistle in the match between RGVFC Louisville City. Get an unfavorable result tonight, losing 1-0 to to the number one team in the Eastern Conference. Conference. <laughs> Sí, ya, Unrecognizable first half by the Toros. I think that's the best way to uh, summarize this uh, this particular game where Louisville City pretty much showed why they are the number one team in the in the Eastern Conference, completely nullifying Pinson and uh, and Jonas Fielberg up on top and causing havoc in the back line. Yeah, no, you're completely right. Uh, it was a tough first half for our DVOC. Uh, it was unrecognizable. And, uh, you know, coming out of press conference and hearing what they had to say, it is true. Now, I'm glad that they they recognized it. Even Tyler Derrick recognized it. Basically, you know, kind of summing it up, saying it got to be better. And it does start with him. It does start with the team. It, it was a frustrating first half. I'm glad that they were able to get something together in the second half the defense was still really good in the first half but you have to have offense playing well and they did not have that it, it fieldberg seemed unrecognizable um yeah everybody basically i'm glad that wahabakway made a big difference in that first half even though they did allow that one goal it was still very good to see that they were still trying and a couple of goal line clearances really saved this team from it being a three to four goal game for louisville now, the big key, and we talked about it as the first half went on, was the high pressure from Louisville City. We talked about it in previous games where that is the key to uh, nullify RGVFC playing with the high pressure. Um, in this match, you would see Christian Pinson try to, re to receive the ball with his back towards the goal. By the time he received it, he already had one or two defenders right at his back, ready to take the ball away. Um, Fiel, uh, Fielberg unrecognizable. Um, he looked very lost out there. Players like Gringo Torres and Wahabakwe, um, seeing them, you know, frustrated, seeing them kind of yelling at, at, at each other. Um, it was it was the Toros that I hadn't seen before, but I think you know Tyler Derrick said it best. You know, at the end of the day, we need to remember that, that this team is a family, and that we need to we need to be uh, positive. We need to be constructive, and and, and not destructive. Um, however, you know Louisville City capitalized on a mistake by Tyler Derrick trying to clear the ball away. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the, the Toros were unable to recover. Uh, one more again, once again, you know, questionable substitutions. Mm -hmm. Make his first uh, first substitution in the 69th minute. Brings in Frank Gaviria for Gringo Torres. It was, I understand taking out Gringo, right? Mm -hmm. But for Gaviria, we haven't seen a lot from. Uh, I was questionable then. You wait until the what 88th minute to bring in uh, Ollie Wright, and when Ollie Wright came in, it it brought a whole new dynamic to the Toros. They they had a, a last minute uh, goal uh, or the uh, goal opportunity as well. Unfortunately, they were not able to uh, capital uh, capitalize with Kyle Morton getting getting a save. I think overall, you know, what what are your thoughts? Do you, do you believe that uh, there was? Uh, Still some positives to take away from this match, or what, what's your overall thoughts on the, on the results? Some positives to take away, at least in the second half. Um, yeah, Wilmer doesn't make the best substitutions at this best time. I think we both talked about it before. You should have, or he should have brought on, and of course, hindsight 2020, but he should have brought on Ollie Wright before he brings on uh, maybe Frank or somebody for Gringo. Everybody in that time was not playing great. But yes, at least Wilmer could have made something like that. There were still some positives as in the fight in the second half was better than what we had seen in that first half. The possession was pretty even, but that was as expected as in the first half. At least what I noticed when RGVFC had the ball with that high pressure, they could not get forward. They could not get in the box. They passed the ball back a lot instead of trying to take a shot from a far out. I understand you don't really want to do that, but in a sense, I'd rather the, t see them take a shot 
because in this there's a better opportunity to get a deflection for a corner or a deflection in the back of the net from your opponent so it's just yeah but yes the fight in the second half was much better still not at the level where it could be but as we've even heard from fans this loss could be promising for a humble pie moment i was just about to ask you if you considered this a bit of humble pie uh, for, for for the for this team i know eric pimentel mentioned it right now he, he said you know the locker room views this you know the positive you know that you can get out of this negative situation is that they, this makes the team realize we are not at the level of the elite teams of the USL championship. These last four games, everything went right for them. Mm -hmm. So maybe some people thought, you know, or some of the players thought, you know, we can take on anyone. Yeah. You know, Fieldberg did mention, you know, a couple of weeks ago, was like when we're at 100%, no, we have no defense can stop us. Well, Louisville City showed, showed them that they can stop them. They might not have been at a hundred percent, but that's a clear sign that they are not consistent enough to be in the considered an elite team in the USL uh, championship. But uh, Jacob, any any last thoughts before we sign off? Yeah, um, it's going to be interesting to see what, what dynamic they from this loss they bring to Phoenix or Phoenix, nice. uh, Memphis. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Phoenix because we're not traveling to Phoenix. They're coming to us at least, at least next Saturday. But it's it is going to be interesting to see because that the momentum's still technically on RGVFC's side. They're still in seventh place, and Tyler Dirk said it best himself. We need to practice more, you know, get better and be less negative to each other. Because again, like we just mentioned, we saw on the field they were not friendly to each other as a team mm -hmm. and yes family can get under people's under your skin but yeah. and the end of, at the end of the day you're a freaking team and need to be one of 11 and not you know one of one it, it, it's going to be interesting they need the three points now they still hold seventh place which is a positive so we'll just we'll see we'll see what happens it's going to be a fun set of wednesday night Definitely. And, you know, just real quickly, my thoughts, you know, I'm not mad at this result. I mean, this is a result that made a lot of sense if you, when you consider, you know, the level of arrival that, that you're holding up, right? Um, the way that they played, you know, what does frustrate you, obviously, is that, you know, you're playing at home. Uh, you wasted 45 minutes, you know, giving louisville the initiative now i do think that the second half improvement was like i told you uh uh in the first half louisville it's hard for a team to uh deploy high pressure 90 plus minutes right you have to be like a lead of the lead in europe to be able to withstand that the the, the fatigue of, of high pressure constantly the key was that louisville at some point was going to let off on that high pressure because then they would, you know, they would pretty much uh, tire them, themselves and, leave, and give an advantage uh, to the Toros. This is why in the second half, I felt uh, the, the the Toros had a lot more opportunities uh, on goal. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to capitalize. I think they only had like one or two, one shot on two shots on target out of 10 shots, yeah. you know, so we're back to the whole uh, accuracy thing. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just a game to learn. Learn, learn what, learn your mistakes. Learn when you need to improve, and more importantly, uh, know that you have to play every game. You know, at a hundred percent focus. And I know talking to some of the other media members, they they kind of had the idea that maybe the team came in a little bit too confident in this match. So, good case of humble pie. Um, Obviously, the team is still hasn't clinched playoffs. Uh, there's still three more games. Very difficult, very difficult one next uh, on Wednesday. But we'll, we'll we'll see what happens next. But it's going to be a very very interesting fight till the end for the Western Conference uh, playoff qualifications. But Jacob, thank you thank you so much for coming on uh, tonight to to the game, talking about give you your thoughts. 
And we invite you this Thursday at 8.30 p.m. live on our YouTube channel. We will be talking more about this game. We'll be talking more about the Memphis game uh, in, in detail for the podcast. And if you haven't listened to this uh, week, this past week's episode, be sure to check it out on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and or wherever your favorite podcasting platform is. Uh, from HB Park, my name is Edson Ochoa. I'm Jake Young. And we will see you all next Saturday here against Phoenix Rising. Have a good night.